tuning your drums when they have pitched frequency content, especially like kicks with long tails, is important. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I do that without destroying the transient information on those kicks. So for this, I'm just working with a couple different kick drums, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Let's look at this one, the Cashmere Signature Kick 02 Omni Slash F. It sounds like this. Okay, and you see there's that long tail there, that boom, and you can see that in the waveform here too. And we have the transient info up here, but if you want to change that, and I'll just do an extreme example, if I want to pitch that an octave down, you see that, I mean, we, we have a huge gap here uh, because the transient has been messed up and uh, it's it's not good. Even just going down a little bit doesn't have quite the same transient click and pop as it should. What I'm essentially doing is playing different notes. It's the same thing as just going like this with the transposition. But the way to counteract that, that I have found, is to actually take the audio of the kick, duplicate it, and then what we're going to do is take this second kick and change the pitch of it. So it's the same thing that we've just been doing, really. But let's say I want to go down five semitones. And then we take the first one, and we're actually going to leave it the same, and we're going to use the transient data from this one, uh, the beginning part, the click, pop, whatever, of this kick, and then blend it into the adjusted uh, pitch of the second kick. So first thing we'll do is just shorten it a little bit. And that was just one movement on this little timeline. Um, whatever zoom level you're at, it doesn't matter. Uh, just, you know, get to one. I just did whatever the first movement on this timeline zoom level is. Move it over all the way to the beginning and then move it over one like we did. So now we've got the two clicks gonna play, or the two kicks gonna play and uh, they're not gonna sound great together. Yeah, that's got that weird like thing going on. Almost sounds like static or a crackle. It's just the envelopes here are, you know, you can see there's a hard cut and it's just having this really weird effect. So the way we take care of that is with fades. So just by dragging these guys around, you see how that hard cut becomes smooth? So now, uh, really all it is from here is just uh, a little tweaking to get the uh, get an appropriate good sounding transition between these two kicks. And you can see that we've got a huge, you know, going all the way up and then this little one, it's not going to sound, it's probably not going to sound good. That just doesn't sound too bad. But if I move it, I mean, you know, I'm just going to be tweaking here a little bit to see how how good I can get it. Yeah, I mean, that sounds good to me. And if I just play the first part, I just want to make sure that it doesn't have too much pitched content in it, particularly below 100 hertz. And it doesn't. So there, I mean, the only thing to do from here is just that the tail is quite a bit longer because we adjusted the pitch of it. So you can see it, it really should be tailing off right around here. That's, you know, if you want it to be lasting that long, that's up to you. But for me, I'm just going to shorten that up. And that's about where it should be. So, yeah. There's the new kick and the old one. I like to do this to compare to make sure that I didn't screw anything up too bad. The old one sounded like this. Sensible transition, it sounds good. It doesn't sound fake or wrong the way that the crossovers work. Um, so there you have it. The transient data is there, un unscathed. And the pitch tone of the kick has been altered. Now, you of course, never want your kick to be that low, like a C0 or whatever it is. But, you know, if you have a kick that's higher up, like a like a B flat, 
then you can easily pitch this down to like an F if you want to. We'll do it with another kick just to give you a bit uh, more, a different type of kick so you can see uh, what it will be like in this situation. So we've got huge heavy kick, trancey uplifting kick. So duplicate. And this one is at a B flat ish. So actually, yeah, let's make this an F. So we'll go to the new kick, down five semitones. There's our F kick. Or nope. Wait, am I wrong? Five semitones down is an F from B flat. Maybe the first one was not a B flat. Right, it was an A flat. Okay, so. Uh, crisis averted. So here's the first one. We want to keep that transient data, so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and jump it over. That's probably a bit too much. There, okay. And that's going to make it impossible to do, so I got to zoom back out and just deal with the fact that it's quite a lot of the transient is cut off. Move it over one. There we go. Now it sounds like this. Which actually sounds pretty decent, but wow, look at how perfectly that lines up. I mean, not perfectly, but it's pretty damn close. All right, then. Well, the next thing we do is just blend it. So, uh, a little blendy. Oops. And I'm going to move it over just a bit because this guy... Oh, no, it's fine. Uh, yeah, are we done? I think we're done. Let's let's find out. Old kick sounded like this. So yeah, I think nailed it. Sounds great. So, you know, the real process is just to make sure that the transition point between these two kicks does not look hard. Uh, maybe if I jump it around a little bit, I can get it to look a little bit worse. To give you an example, maybe something like that. What's going on here? Nope, that looks fucking perfect too. Okay, well, maybe I picked a bad example to work with for this one, but you saw in the first example that when it has a hard cut, there's a bit of a gross sound to it. Um, so it's really just messing with the fades to make sure that that goes away and it sounds good in the low end. Using a sub when you do this, of course, is very helpful to make sure that that, that pop isn't there. I'm not using one right now because I'm recording with a microphone and that would be not good. So I'm on headphones and maybe I'm wrong as I'm doing this and I go and check it on a sub and it sounds terrible. But that's the general idea. Probably too long of a video to explain such a short concept, but um, to recap, Keep the transient data of the untouched, the unchanged kick, and use the uh, the changed kick pitch, the the pitch change, <laughs> the kick duplicate with the the pitch changed, and blend those together in a way that sounds good. That's all. Okay, love you. Bye.